Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we've got more of an interesting sort of video because we're not really going to be doing much with the um, planets today actually because if you didn't know it's actually the um, 40th anniversary of Voyager 1 today so I'm going to do sort of like a little tribute video, um, a video sort of um, for Voyager 1 since it is in my opinion a very legendary space probe along with its twin Voyager 2 which if you didn't know Voyager 2 was actually um, launched in the 20th of August or the 20th of August 1977 so Voyager 2 was actually launched first which is a very interesting thing but yeah we're going to be focusing on Voyager 1 because this is the um, this is the main legend here that visited Jupiter and Saturn because it did get there first before Voyager 2 so yeah look at this bad boy right here lovely old school looking space probe yeah this is definitely the coolest looking space probe if you ask me because it just looks so much cooler than like the juno and the new horizons and all that it just looks so much cooler like i love the long bit that sticks out from it like it just looks so cool i don't really know what that is because i'm not a aerospace engineer but yeah look at that i think that i, I actually don't know what that is it's all got the radar dish the camera is here somewhere i think somewhere oh it's gone dang it we've got to zoom out or zoomed in too much yeah the camera's at that top point somewhere i believe so yeah good old voyager one so yeah, this was launched on today's date which is the 5th of september 2017 so it was launched in the 5th of september 1977 so yeah a long way before i was born <laughs> so yeah look at this guy so remember it launched in 1977 but then there was a very very well, two year wait until it arrived at its first destination. So, we're gonna slide down to simulation right here where it is. So, we're about to are we? So, in 1979, Voyager 1, which is right here. So, yes, this is 1979 now. So, two years on. So, Voyager 1, as we can see here, we'll rotate it the right way up because I think this is the way it's meant to be. So, it arrived at Jupiter. So,. Yeah, looking good. So this is sort of doing like a journey of Voyager 1 in this video. So yeah, look at this. So Voyager 1 then arrived at Jupiter in 1979 and it got the very first pictures of Jupiter close up. So obviously this was the first thing to properly visit Jupiter, I believe, because I, I know about the Pioneer probes, but I don't know if they really got any detailed images. I think they did. I don't actually know, actually. So if anyone knows anything about the Pioneer probes, I because I, I don't know about them. So if you know about the Pioneer probes and what they their main like, sort of thing was, tell me because that'd be interesting. But yeah, Voyager 1 arrived at Jupiter and got the very, very first pictures of Jupiter and it's all its moons close up. So remember, the um, Voyager, I believe, actually got some good pictures of the moons. But even if Pioneer did come to Jupiter, which I don't know if it did or not, I don't, it definitely didn't get pictures of the moon. So yeah, if you um, didn't know as well, the scientist... Um, I think it was called he was called Galileo I can't remember his other name or first name I think but yeah he got he found out that there was four moons orbiting Jupiter so these moons were Io and then we got Europa which is there so Io Europa then we got Ganymede which is the largest moon in the solar system and then Callisto and these are known as the Galileo moon or Galilean moons I don't know how to pronounce that but yeah the Galilean moons so there's the four original moons and the way he spotted these was he saw four dark dots that sometimes went across the face of jupiter so if we have a look here we should see some like big dots we just need to wait for europa to come around yes yeah, so let's just use europa for instance so we'll just move it up in its orbit a little bit so like this and there should be a shadow which is crossing jupiter yes yeah, so galileo spotted that there was four different shadows that cross jupiter every few days as well as these moons take a few days to go around i believe jupiter how long does it take yeah three days for europa to go um around jupiter so yeah, he discovered there was four moons going around Jupiter, and then these um, were all obviously named, and they're, the, they're very large moons, a very large bunch of moons, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we got the very first pictures of these guys with the Voyager 1 space probe. So there's Io right there, so Voyager 1 got a very good close by of Io, according to the simulation here, as we can see. Very, very nice um, close picture, and I believe, yeah, I don't know if it is Voyager 1 or Voyager 2, but they captured a eruption on Io because if you didn't know Io is a very volcanic object it's more geologically active than Earth is so it has more going on like with volcanoes and it, Voyager 1 I believe captured a photo of a volcano erupting and the scientists at NASA originally didn't know what that was they thought it may be another moon maybe it was behind Io but then they found out it was a volcanic moon so yeah it was just a volcano erupting so there's a good flyby of Io there with good old Voyager 1 and then I don't know did, yeah did it go around Jupiter for a bit um, let's have a look here. I don't know where the probe is going. 
Because I don't know, because I'm pretty sure it orbited Jupiter. I don't think it went straight onto Saturn after it left Jupiter. But yeah, I don't know where it's heading. It may have gone to Saturn, actually. Oh, there's Voyager 2 as well. So there's a... See, Voyager 2 didn't actually make it yet. So, yeah, sorry, Voyager 1 is the star of this video. So, yeah, I got some detailed pictures of all the stuff. Or all of the stuff. So we've got the Jupiter as the main... Um, feature here then we've got all of the four moons and then it probably discovered that some of these guys as well i don't know for sure but i think the main four moons were the main stars of the show apart from jupiter but yeah it probably did discover some other moons along the way there i don't know for sure but yeah there we go so that's good so good old voyager one then after it visited jupiter obviously it started to head to saturn so if we look here then we um probably speed up time a bit so we'll speed it up and then yeah it left the jupiter system completely so obviously jupiter's got a ton of moons so it left jupiter and then it completely went all the way this way until it rendezvoused with saturn a lot later so we're going to go ahead and go on to that now so voyager 1 and saturn in 1980 so it only took a year for it to arrive at saturn and to discover some of the coolest moons of all time if you ask me so here it is approaching Saturn. Oh, where's the rings? We've got to add the rings in because um, I remember, or I remember seeing like a um, sort of like documentary on this. People were very, very hyped to see Saturn close up because of the rings. People really love the rings around Saturn because we knew it. We already knew it had rings from a long way back. So yeah, we knew it had rings. But when we finally got to see these guys close up with Voyager One as it approached Saturn for the very, very first time. I'm pretty sure everyone watching that tape has it, the live sort of tape or pictures that were coming in. They must have been so hyped to see this for the very first time. Because there it is. The planet with the biggest rings in the solar system. Look at that. Just so, It's just a beauty to look at as Voyager 1 approaches. So it would have got some shots. If we, there's its camera there. So it would have got some shots like this. And we can see Titan there as well. So yeah, we'll move on to that in a bit. But yeah, it approached Saturn. And I'm pretty sure everyone watching that video was just amazed by just how... Or the beauty in those rings. Because yeah, seeing that for the first time in... Or yeah, it was pretty much the first time in history we saw Saturn as a close-up object. So yeah, it saw Saturn... And then here's a close by, and it also got a very close um, look at the Saturn's moon Titan. So if you didn't know, this is probably the most interesting moon in the solar system, after me, if you ask me. Or probably definitely one of the top five. Yeah, this is definitely one of the most interesting moons in the solar system, not just because of its size. Because we originally thought this was the biggest moon in the solar system, and Ganymede was second largest. But then they checked it over, and Ganymede was actually found to be larger. So we originally thought this was the largest moon in the solar system, and it definitely deserved to have that title. Because it was just cool. Because obviously it had all the features that a planet would need. It's got, obviously it's got its um, atmosphere, uh, atmosphere made of methane, I believe. Well, was it methane? I know it had methane oceans. I oh, know it was... What was it? It was nitrogen. Yeah, it was an atmosphere of nitrogen, and that was that sparked the um, scientists at NASA saying, "Oh, this is a very interesting body." But sadly, Voyager's cameras couldn't penetrate through the clouds, so the only images we could get was just of an orange body, an orange cloud, and stuff. So it's basically an orange version of Venus, and obviously a cold version as well. So, yeah, there you go. There. Yeah, but we got a very good close-up, as um, this simulation shows. It had a very good flyby of Titan there. And then it started to approach Saturn itself. And it also discovered and um, or got some close-ups of a lot of Saturn's other moons. So we can line them all up here. So there we go. There's good old Neptune, the coolest planet, obviously. <laughs> there we go. So there's Titan. Uh, it's got all these dwarf planets. That's kind of annoying, actually. Is it? Are the moons of Saturn even here? Actually, yeah, we'll just go. We'll just find them manually, actually. It'll be easier. So we'll go on trails here. Actually, we'll just use labels, actually. So... Where's, where's Saturn at? There's Saturn there. Where's Voyager 2? Yeah, there's Voyager 2. See, Voyager 2 was still pretty much halfway in between Saturn and Jupiter because it was a lot further behind. But, yeah, there we are. So, we're going to go and have a look here. So, it also discovered, or both of the probes also dis um, also got some very close-ups of Mimas. So, this was a very interesting moon because this brought up the very first theories on why Saturn could have its rings. So, you see that impact mark there? People, or um, the scientists, are, are, I believe one of the theories to this day actually is, look at the size of that. It looks like objects were getting striked by very, very large, or the moons, I should say, were getting striked by very, very large asteroids. And these asteroids were so large, they could have almost torn that entire object apart, just because of the impact force. If two objects of similar size collide and they're near a planet, they could destroy each other. So that brought up the theory, what if a moon was a small moon, so maybe smaller than Mimas maybe, was actually struck by a very large asteroid or another moon. 
and then it exploded. And instead of its gravity pulling it back together, just because we had the Sat because it was so close to Saturn, Saturn's gravity spread out all of the parts of the moon and formed the rings. But yeah, I've mentioned this in another video about like the formation of Saturn's rings. So if you want to like learn about that more in detail, then check that out. But yeah, because there's multiple theories. We don't know for sure what these rings came from. It could be from a planet that got too close to Saturn. It could have been from a moon colliding with an asteroid. Or there's just multiple theories. So if you want to go more into detail of that, um, go check it out because that'd be interesting. Yeah, go Google it or just look at on YouTube for videos because I've made a video on it as well. So yeah, Voyager One got a very nice close by of Saturn here and they also um the guys at NASA I believe they also wanted to fly the probe in between the planet and the rings but at the time because obviously it's in the this was 1980 they didn't know for sure if it was a good idea so poor old um Voyager didn't get to go in between the planet and the rings because we didn't know if there was more rings in between the planet and the rings or the main rings that we couldn't see so we didn't want to risk flying the probe in there and ruining the mission with both probes because they, they could have flown both of them there if they wanted to, but I believe they didn't, because um, they did not want to damage the probes, because obviously this was the 70s, the probes, were, or the 80s I should say now, the probes probably weren't as easy to control as modern day ones are, I'm assuming, so yeah, so there we go, there's Voyager 1 there, having a very nice trip of Saturn, but then, this was an interesting thing, as it left Saturn, we got a very interesting look at Saturn, because leaving Saturn, just look at that view, I've seen this so many times in like simulations on YouTube and stuff of just when Voyager left Saturn. That is nice because obviously it went upwards, Voyager 1. So we saw Saturn from behind the rings. We saw it from behind because obviously when we've looked at the um or when we've looked at Saturn and its rings before, we've only looked from Earth and we've always seen Saturn from the front side. But now we've actually been able to look at Saturn from behind and we can just see how the Saturn blocks out its rings when it because obviously there's a shadow it basically eclipses all of the rings so it makes a very cool look there and where's Voyager 1 gone where's Voyager 1 where is it oh, it's here somewhere let's just zoom in then oh there it is can't really see it but yeah there's Voyager 1 if you want to see it so yeah so we've got a very nice look of um Saturn in there and also I believe we discovered that there's actually more rings that we can't see and you have to look behind Saturn because they're so thin and they're so unvisible we can't see them with the naked eye you can only see them from behind Saturn because the sunlight lights them up so in theory, these are the rings that we can see with our visible eyes, or we can, we can see these from Earth with our eyes, but there's actually another set of rings which are a little, or there's like more rings that we cannot see from behind Saturn, so we could just go and extend this out and do that. So, we can't see these rings from the front, but from behind, we can see these rings that spread out more. So, if you didn't know, yeah, if you look at Saturn, just Google Saturn, or Saturn from behind on YouTube, or Google or something, and you should be able to see a picture of the rings of Saturn, like, glowing from... Yeah, just get a behind... Try and find a behind picture of Saturn, and you could see something like this. Because, yeah, Saturn did have more rings from behind that we could see. Because, obviously, seeing them from the perspective of Earth or in front of Saturn, the sunlight dims them all out. But if you look from behind, you can see them because of the shadows and stuff like that. But, yes, yeah, very interesting stuff, Saturn. Yeah, so after 1980, Voyager 1 left Saturn, and it was never to be seen again because... If you look here, Voyager 1, it went upwards. Because obviously, Voyager 2, if you didn't know, it went to Uranus and Neptune. But Voyager 1 didn't do that. It just went straight upwards. So, as we can see here, it instead of going forwards towards the other one, it's sort of going upwards, as you can see. Like, if we just look at the orbits of the solar system, look, they're all relatively flat. But Voyager 1 here is actually going upwards. So, we can't really see it. But yeah, there it is. So, it's actually going up. But if we look at Voyager 2, so now we'll actually head to the present day, because obviously this was Voyager 1's last debut, was pretty much at Saturn. So if we go to the modern day now, so Voyager 1 and 2 in 2017, so we're now on, yeah, the first of, well, I don't even know, I don't know if that's, what day is this? Local time? A uh, PM. Um, I don't know if that's, is that January the 2nd, or, or is it February the 1st? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which time, because in the UK we have the, I think we have, the, yeah, we have the day before the month, but I think Americans have the month before the day in dates like that. But yeah, so anyways, going back on point, as you can see, Voyager 1 is still heading upwards to this day. So this is where it is right now. So it's further than the orbit of Eris now, and it's basically very, very far out. It's not as far as Sedna yet, but it is almost as far as the orbit of 2012 VP113 here. So, yes, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, so Voyager 1 right now is just 
in deep space pretty much. It's pretty much left the solar system. Well, in theory it hasn't because Sedna, as you know, its orbit spreads out a lot further than this. Because obviously Sedna goes all the way out here. So Voyager 1, like, if you ask me, it typically I'd class it as in the solar system. But I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's in interstellar space now. I can see why they would say that because it is out of the sun's grasp. But in theory, it isn't, because Sedna does go all the way out here, and Sedna is still in Sun's grasp. And they're not mentioning Planet 9 if it exists as well. That's very far out. So, yeah, here's Voyager 1 to this day. So it's just complete darkness, because it's too far away from the Sun. And it is travelling at 17 kilometres a second, apparently. I wonder how many miles... or kilometres an hour. So it's travelling at 61,185 kilometres an hour right now, so... That is very fast. This is the fastest ever man-made object, I think. How about, is Voy what about Voyager 2? Is that going faster? Or is Voyager 2 going faster? Voyager 2 is 53,000. So, yeah, Voyager 1 is travelling quicker according to this. I don't know if that's for sh I don't know if that's for sure. I don't know if... Is it Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 is faster? I don't know. But, I f yeah, according to this, Voyager 1 is travelling faster. So, here is the lonely Voyager 1. And it is sadly running out of power soon. I think by 2020, so 2020... The year, obviously. I think Voyager 1 will... We will lose Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 because they just run out of battery and there's no... They're not anywhere near the sun anymore, so... Their mission is complete. And it's been complete for a long time. But, yeah, they're just travelling in deep space right now. And that is um, kind of sad, actually. It would have been cool if we could get these guys back or just leave them in orbit. But the same reason what they're doing with um, Cassini is they don't want to contaminate any moons. That's why they're crashing Cassini into Saturn. So there will be a video on that when that does happen because yeah rip Cassini but yeah also rip Voyager because Voyager is gonna die soon it's just gonna run out of power and it's just gonna be drifting in space forever so yeah poor, poor Voyager 1 how far is it from the Sun can we see is it say anything here so let's just get a rough idea so Voyager 1 is about 300 astronomical units plus so about 300 ish I don't that's not for sure because I don't know the exact one but it's continually moving so you can't really put an exact distance on it but yeah there you go so that is poor Voyager 1 now and obviously um, Voyager 2 obviously went on to Uranus and Neptune so that's why it's a little further behind but yeah this, this video is about Voyager 1 since it is the 40th anniversary today so hopefully um, you guys enjoyed this sort of little tribute video to um, Voyager 1 I think I um, did a good job of it I'm not really the best at doing uh, more educational explanational videos we just like to have around or mess around and have fun just doing stuff with the solar system but i think this was um i think i did a good job of this tell me what you guys think did i do a good job in this video because i'm not really the best at making educational stuff but yeah i think this was um a good and obviously if you guys want to research more on voyager one what they did and what they found out go um google it or check out the nasa website i'm pretty sure they'll um keep you covered with all the information on voyager one and all the things it discovered or just check out a documentary on it because you'll probably find them around somewhere documentaries on what the voyager probes found and discovered and where they are now so yeah there you go guys so hopefully you will enjoy this video and please say um how well you think i did in this video because uh, like i said i'm not the best at making these sort of types of videos but yeah i think i did a good job so yeah there we go so hopefully you guys all enjoyed make sure you did hit that subscribe button leave a like help us on the journey to 1100 subscribers let's still see if we can hit that goal of 1100 before september the 10th because that would be awesome we we'll get we're closing in we're less than 30 subscribers away now so 30 we're less than 30 people from the next milestone that is insane because we only hit a thousand like last week or the week before so we are we are really rocketing our way in in the numbers so yeah that is that so yeah all good so there we go so yeah like i said make sure you all have a good day subscribe leave a like and i'll see you in the next video goodbye